Tyre, gateway to the sea. God's message came to me, you, son of man, raise a funeral song over Tyre. Tell Tyre, gateway to the sea, merchant to the world, trader among the far-off islands, this is what God, the Master, says, you boast, Tyre, I'm the perfect ship, stately, handsome. You ruled the high seas from a real beauty, crafted to perfection. Your planking came from Mount Hermon junipers. A Lebanon cedar supplied your mast. They made your oars from sturdy Bashan oaks. Cypress from Cyprus inlaid with ivory was used for the decks. Your sail and flag were of colorful embroidered linen from Egypt. Your purple deck awnings also came from Cyprus. Men of Sidon and Arved pulled the oars. Your seasoned seamen, O Tyre, were the crew. Ships carpenters were old salts from Byblos. All the ships of the sea and their sailors clustered around you to barter for your goods. Your army was composed of soldiers from Paras, Lud, and Put, elite troops in uniformed splendor. They put you on the map. Your city police were imported from Arvad, Helic, and Gamut. They hung their shields from the city walls, a final, perfect touch to your beauty. Tars Hish carried on business with you because of your great wealth. They worked for you, trading in silver, iron, tin, and lead for your products. Greece, Tubal, and Meshek did business with you, trading slaves and bronze for your products. Beth Togerma traded work horses, war horses, and mules for your products. The people of Rhodes did business with you. Many far-off islands traded with you in ivory and ebony. Edom did business with you because of all your goods. They traded for your products with agate, purple textiles, embroidered cloth, fine linen, coral, and rubies. Judah and Israel did business with you. They traded for your products with premium wheat, millet, honey, oil, and balm. Damascus, attracted by your vast array of products and well-stocked warehouses, carried on business with you, trading in wine from Helbon and wool from Zahar. Danites and Greeks from Uzal traded with you, using wrought iron, cinnamon, and spices. Dadan traded with you for saddle blankets. Arabia and all the Bedouin sheiks of Kedar traded lambs, rams, and goats with you. Traders from Sheba and Ramah in South Arabia carried on business with you in premium spices, precious stones, and gold. Haran, Kenna, and Eden from the east in Assyria and Media traded with you, bringing elegant clothes, dyed textiles, and elaborate carpets to your bazaars. The great Tarshish ships were your freighters, importing and exporting. Oh, it was big business for you, trafficking the seaways. Your sailors row mightily, taking you into the high seas. Then a storm out of the east shatters your ship in the ocean deep. Everything sinks, your rich goods and products, sailors and crew, ships carpenters and soldiers, sink to the bottom of the sea. Total shipwreck. The cries of your sailors reverberate on shore. Sailors everywhere abandon ship. Veteran seamen swim for dry land. They cry out in grief, a choir of bitter lament over you. They smear their faces with ashes, shave their heads, wear rough burlap, wildly keening their loss. They raise their funeral song, who on the high seas is like Tyre. As you crisscrossed the seas with your products, you satisfied many peoples. Your worldwide trade made Earth's kings rich. And now you're battered to bits by the waves, sunk to the bottom of the sea, and everything you've bought and sold has sunk to the bottom with you. Everyone on shore looks on in terror. The hair of kings stands on end, their faces drawn and haggard. The buyers and sellers of the world throw up their hands, this horror can't happen. Oh, this has happened. The money has gone to your head. God's message came to me, son of man, tell the prince of Tyre, this is what God, the master, says, your heart is proud, going around saying, I'm a God. I sit on God's divine throne, ruling the sea, you, a mere mortal, not even close to being a God, a mere mortal trying to be a God. Look, you think you're smarter than Daniel. No enigmas can stump you. Your sharp intelligence made you world wealthy. You piled up gold and silver in your banks. You used your head well, worked good deals, made a lot of money. But the money has gone to your head, swelled your head, what a big head. Therefore, God, the Master, says, because you're acting like a God, pretending to be a God, I'm giving fair warning, I'm bringing strangers down on you, the most vicious of all nations. They'll pull their swords and make hash of your reputation for knowing it all. They'll puncture the balloon of your god pretensions. They'll bring you down from your self-made pedestal and bury you in the deep blue sea. 
Will you protest to your assassins, you can't do that. I'm a god. To them you're a mere mortal. They're killing a man, not a god. You'll die like a stray dog, killed by strangers, because I said so. Decree of God, the Master. God's message came to me, son of man, raise a funeral song over the king of Tyre. Tell him, a message from God, the Master, you had everything going for you. You were in Eden, God's garden. You were dressed in splendor, your robe studded with jewels, carnelian, peridot, and moonstone, beryl, onyx, and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald, all in settings of engraved gold. A robe was prepared for you the same day you were created. You were the anointed cherub. I placed you on the mountain of God. You strolled in magnificence among the stones of fire. From the day of your creation you were sheer perfection. And then imperfection, evil was detected in you. In much buying and selling you turned violent, you sinned. I threw you, disgraced, off the mountain of God. I threw you out, you, the anointed angel cherub. No more strolling among the gems of fire for you. Your beauty went to your head. You corrupted wisdom by using it to get worldly fame. I threw you to the ground, sent you sprawling before an audience of kings and let them gloat over your demise. By sin after sin after sin, by your corrupt ways of doing business, you defiled your holy places of worship. So I set a fire around and within you. It burned you up. I reduced you to ashes. All anyone sees now when they look for you is ashes, a pitiful mound of ashes. All who once knew you now throw up their hands, this can't have happened. This has happened. God's message came to me, son of man, confront Sidon. Preach against it. Say, message from God the master, look. I'm against you, Sidon. I intend to be known for who I truly am among you they'll know that I am God when I set things right and reveal my holy presence. I'll order an epidemic of disease there, along with murder and mayhem in the streets. People will drop dead right and left, as war presses in from every side. Then they'll realize that I mean business, that I am God. No longer will Israel have to put up with their thistle and thorn neighbors who have treated them so contemptuously. And they also will realize that I am God. God, the Master, says, when I gather Israel from the peoples among whom they've been scattered and put my holiness on display among them with all the nations looking on, then they'll live in their own land that I gave to my servant Jacob. They'll live there in safety. They'll build houses. They'll plant vineyards, living in safety. Meanwhile, I'll bring judgment on all the neighbors who have treated them with such contempt. And they'll realize that I am God. Never a world power again. In the tenth year, in the tenth month, on the twelfth day, God's message came to me, son of man, confront Pharaoh king of Egypt. Preach against him and all the Egyptians. Tell him, God, the master, says, watch yourself, Pharaoh, king of Egypt. I'm dead set against you, you lumbering old dragon, lolling and flaxed in the Nile, saying, it's my Nile. I made it. It's mine. I'll set hooks in your jaw, I'll make the fish of the Nile stick to your scales. I'll pull you out of the Nile, with all the fish stuck to your scales. Then I'll drag you out into the desert, you and all the Nile fish sticking to your scales. You'll lie there in the open, rotting in the sun, meat to the wild animals and carrion birds. Everybody living in Egypt will realize that I am God. Because you've been a flimsy reed crutch to Israel so that when they gripped you, you splintered and cut their hand, and when they leaned on you, you broke and sent them sprawling, message of God, the master, I'll bring war against you, do away with people and animals alike. And turn the country into an empty desert so they'll realize that I am God. Because you said, it's my Nile. I made it. It's all mine, therefore I am against you and your rivers. I'll reduce Egypt to an empty, desolate wasteland all the way from Migdal in the north to Syene and the border of Ethiopia in the south. Not a human will be seen in it nor will an animal move through it. It'll be just empty desert, empty for forty years. I'll make Egypt the most desolate of all desolations. For forty years I'll make her cities the most wasted of all wasted cities. I'll scatter Egyptians to the four winds, send them off every which way into exile. But, says God, the master, that's not the end of it. After the forty years, I'll gather up the Egyptians from all the places where they've been scattered. I'll put things back together again for Egypt. I'll bring her back to Pathros where she got her start long ago. 
there she'll start over again from scratch. She'll take her place at the bottom of the ladder and there she'll stay, never to climb that ladder again, never to be a world power again. Never again will Israel be tempted to rely on Egypt. All she'll be to Israel is a reminder of old sin. Then Egypt will realize that I am God, the Master. In the twenty-seventh year, in the first month, on the first day of the month, God's message came to me, Son of Man, Nebuchadnezzar, King of Babylon, has worn out his army against Tyre. They've worked their fingers to the bone and have nothing to show for it. Therefore, God, the Master, says, I'm giving Egypt to Nebuchadnezzar King of Babylon. He'll haul away its wealth, pick the place clean. He'll pay his army with Egyptian plunder. He's been working for me all these years without pay. This is his pay, Egypt. Decree of God, the Master. And then I'll stir up fresh hope in Israel, the dawn of deliverance. And I'll give you, Ezekiel, bold and confident words to speak. And they'll realize that I am God.